It's a pleasure to be back here. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's always uh, great to come back and see familiar old faces. Uh, and uh, this, this project that uh, we'll be speaking about is an art package that I I wrote, I've been the primary developer on, but we started working on this together with Martin and Tommy and several of the interns, I think, a couple of summers ago here. In so, In this very room, that's right. So here's where it all began. Um, this is the, the R package ranking project, which is uh, used to make simple visualizations for comparing populations. Um, so I'll talk about exactly what that means. Today's talk is the demographic edition. Tomorrow we'll have an economic edition, which is essentially the same talk but with different data sets so that we can popularize all the good work being done at the Bureau. So I'll begin with motivation. What is the problem that we're trying to solve? Why are we interested in this? I'll give examples of the kind of visualizations that we've, um, we've summarized and collected and developed. And then I'll talk about actually using the R package itself. The variable we'll be using just for the start of the talk, uh, mean travel time to work. That is from the ACS, uh, the mean travel time to work of workers 16 years and over who did not work at home in minutes. Uh, I don't want to repeat that entire phrase every time, so I'm just going to say travel time to work. The motivating problem here is that uh, the Census Bureau puts out ranking tables uh, from the ACS and from some other data products that we create, where, for instance, uh, we have for each state in the United States the estimated mean travel time to work and its margin of error. And so from these ranking tables, it's um, natural to rank them in order, see which state, for example, has the highest and the lowest um, travel times to work on average, uh, and use the margins of error to compute marginal confidence intervals. So we might have 90% confidence intervals for each state's estimate. Um, and the natural thing to do if you, if you actually plot these intervals is to say, well, some intervals uh, do not overlap, so they must be significantly different estimates. And some intervals do overlap, so those estimates must not be significantly different. Um, that's sort of the, the natural instinct by following the eye, but it's not exactly statistically valid. Uh, having overlapping confidence intervals for two estimates is not always equivalent to those estimates being sig not significantly different, right? So just because they overlap doesn't mean the estimates aren't significantly different. Um, if they don't overlap, that means they are significantly different unless you have many estimates that you're comparing and you want to allow for multiple comparisons. In that case, then it's no longer the case that non-overlap means they are different. So neither overlap nor non-overlap exactly translates to significance of the difference between any pair of estimates. And so for this reason, we've been thinking uh, with Tommy and Martin and others about ways to present data in a visual format that, um, that directly shows the significance of those differences, uh, as well as the precision of those differences in terms of a, a confidence interval for those differences uh, and other flavors of this sort. For instance, here's a ranking table for the mean travel time to work from the 2011 ACS, the one-year estimates there. And here on the uh, left-hand side, you can see the entire table, which is all 50 states plus DC. I think uh, Puerto Rico is there as well. And that's too small to read on the screen, so I blew up just a portion of it. Uh, so we have for uh, each state, the geographical area, uh, how many minutes, the, the estimate essentially, the margin of error, plus or minus uh, some, some amount. And then on these ranking tables, you can also select a state. Uh, so here I've clicked on Louisiana, so that has the two uh, hashtag symbols next to it to say that that's the one we're using as a baseline to make comparisons from. Uh, and then the rest of the column shows our other states sig statistically significantly different from the one we selected. So we can see that Arizona, Colorado, Tennessee, and Nevada in this case are not statistically significantly different estimates from Louisiana's estimate. So either um, they have essentially the same mean travel time to work, or if it's not the same, we haven't estimated it precisely enough to be certain which one is larger, which one's smaller. Um, so this is something that is already available on the Census Bureau website, and we wanted to come up with ways to visualize this more directly than just in a table. Uh, also, I believe these um, calculations of significant differences do not account for multiple comparisons at all. So that's not an option that you can currently select, is do I want to just assume we're only going to pick a specific pair in advance, or is it possible that we'll be scanning the whole table and looking for significance, in which case multiple comparisons, corrections probably should be warranted. 
because all 50 states won't show up on the slides so well, I've subset just to the, uh, the states in the southern region of the United States. So here are the census regions and divisions. Uh, the example for the south seemed to work pretty well for this example. Later we'll be talking about states in the northeast and so on. But um, I think the first few states we'll be comparing are Louisiana. Let's say that we're interested in Louisiana. Maybe we're a reporter from that state and we want to compare it to its neighbors. And we have neighbors such as Texas uh, on one side, Mississippi to the other. Are the estimates significantly different or not? Can we really rank these three states? Or is it going to be difficult to rank them because of the um, inadequate precision for that particular purpose? Here are the marginal confidence intervals, 90% confidence intervals for all, I believe, 17 states uh, in the southern region from this particular data set. So from uh, Oklahoma has the lowest estimated uh, value of mean travel time to work. Maryland has the highest. Um, and Louisiana is here in the middle, ranked number nine or so. Uh, and again, when we compare these confidence intervals, you might say, OK, well, let's see. Here's Louisiana and its neighbor, Texas. Those intervals overlap. So it's natural to assume that we've measured, um, we haven't measured their difference precisely enough to, to say that there's a significant difference between them. But that's not necessarily actually true. And same for Louisiana and Mississippi. Uh, they're very close, but they do not quite overlap. Here we see uh, Mississippi is its confidence intervals upper end is just to the left of the lower end for Louisiana's confidence interval. So they do not overlap, whereas Louisiana and Texas do have intervals that do overlap. So the question is, can we really rank all three of these states? Um, do we know that this is the correct order, or is it possible that these should be uh, flagged as not being significantly different and given the same rank? Here's a subset of the table. We have um, the three states, the estimated uh, mean travel time to work in minutes, the estimated standard error from the American Community Survey, and uh, I'll walk briefly through how we could check for the significance of each of those differences. If we were only looking at one difference at a time and not thinking about multiple comparisons, one way to do that is build a confidence interval for the difference between the two states. So instead of looking at the two separate confidence intervals for um, Mississippi and Louisiana, we build one confidence interval for the difference between them. So we take the difference between uh, Mississippi's 23.86 estimate and Louisiana's 24.54 estimate. Uh, and then we do plus or minus the z-score if we want a 90% confidence interval, the appropriate Z score is 1.64. And then we get the standard error for the difference between them, which we calculate by taking the square root of each standard error, summing those, taking the square root of that sum. So this is standard, straightforward calculation for a confidence interval of the difference between two independent estimates. That's something I should have also prefaced this with, is that because of the way the sampling is done, we can assume that the estimates themselves are independent uh, from state to state, in the American Community Survey at least. And so once you crunch all these numbers, you see that the confidence interval for Mississippi minus Louisiana is between minus 1.1 and minus 0.2. It doesn't include zero. So that means the possibility that there's no difference or that the difference could be either positive or negative, since it's not in that confidence interval for the difference, we can say, OK, we feel confident that um, we did measure this correctly uh, with adequate precision. This really is the right ordering. Mississippi's estimate is lower than Louisiana's, and we're confident that Mississippi is indeed, um, has a true value of the mean travel time that's lower than Louisiana's. Now remember for Texas, we saw that the marginal intervals overlapped with each other, and so we might think that they're not going to be significantly different. But if you do the same calculation for Texas, you see that it just barely excludes zero as well uh, on the other side. So Texas minus Louisiana, that confidence interval turns out to be 0.01 to 0.55. Since it also doesn't include zero, the difference between those two states' estimates is also statistically significant. So um, this is essentially just illustrating the point that just because two intervals overlap, uh, the marginal inter intervals overlap, um, we can't necessarily say that the difference between them is not significant. So if we know that to be true, we'd like to come up with other visualizations that might help us uh, make the correct inferences from the, from the plot directly. So one way to do that would be just to plot the difference and its confidence interval directly. So here is the uh, Louisiana minus itself at a baseline of 0. That's going to be estimated as 0 always. 
uh, then Mississippi minus Louisiana is going to be the estimate and the confidence interval for that difference that we came up with on the previous slide. And a similar thing for Texas. And we can see by looking at these plots directly that because the confidence interval for each difference doesn't overlap zero, then that translates directly to saying these differences are statistically significant. That is if we're assuming only one comparison is being made at a time. Uh, on the other hand, if we want to do multiple comparisons corrections, we might say, well, we have the 17 states in the south that we showed um, earlier in the talk. So let's do a Bonferroni correction for the fact that we could compare Louisiana to 16 other southern states. If we show all 17 of those estimates at once, and Louisiana is our baseline, that's 16 possible comparisons. So um, we incorporate that into the, the z-score, uh, inflating that to 2.7 instead of uh, it was something like 1.6 before. And now the confidence interval for the difference, Mississippi minus Louisiana, that interval does include zero. It goes from minus 1.5 to 0.1, essentially. So because that difference has an interval that does include zero, we can no longer say that they're statistically significantly different after we try to account for the fact that there are multiple comparisons possibly being made. Essentially, we could do this for each of the states. We could compute these intervals for the difference between Louisiana and each of the other southern states. We could allow for um, a Bonferroni correction for the number of comparisons being made. And now we have, as before, Louisiana uh, as a difference with itself is always going to be estimated at zero. But the other states are presented all on one graph. And now uh, it's legitimate to look at any one of these intervals, see whether it overlaps the line at zero through Louisiana, and say for any one of these, is it significantly different from Louisiana or not? The multiple comparisons have been accounted for. The um, natural instinct of looking at overlap of something with something else is dealt with in, this, in, in, in the method of looking at whether each state overlaps with Louisiana in particular.